Hello and welcome back to Modded Minecraft Feed the Bees and today is going to be all about resourceful bee apiaries. So let's jump in. Now ahead of me we have our demonstration apiary. This is a tier 2 apiary. And we also have a huge blank area that we can fill up with even more apiaries. And so the goal is by the end of this episode to have the best possible apiary setup we could possibly hope for. So let's jump in. Now making an apiary is really tough work. If you know how a beehive works, it's basically the same principle, but what you're going to need is a lot of tier 1 beehives to make tier 2 beehives, loads of those for tier 3, loads of those for tier 4, and then loads of those tier 4s for a tier 1 apiary, and then the madness just continues even further. You need four tier 1 apiaries to make a tier 2, four tier 2s to make a tier 3, so on and so forth. So let's take a look into our computer and see what we've got from Resourceful Bees. However, one important thing, don't be like me and think you have to run around collecting like a million prismarine bees nests. Instead, you can literally just craft the base beehive from Minecraft using just some honeycombs and some planks of wood. Much, much easier, much less stressful. Now we've destroyed the two other apiaries that we had in our lab, but before we did, we filled them with tin bees and then got loads and loads of tin honeycombs. We turned those into blocks and we've got 1,600 blocks. So where do we stand as far as apiaries go? Well, we managed to make 34 tier 1 apiaries and we've got two tier 2 apiaries. So let's see how many tier 2 apiaries we can make out of these 34. Right, so the recipe is another star the honeycombs and the apiaries. Eight, so there we go. We can now make eight tier two apiaries. However, we've also got a tier one apiary. Wait, we've got two tier one apiaries in the computer and then two more tier twos. So if we've got tier twos, maybe we can make tier threes. So a tier three apiary is uh, again, four tier twos. We need one honeycomb block this time, but four nether stars around the edge. Oh, there we go, tier 3 apiary. But how many nether stars do we actually have? Only 67, okay, so that's less than I hoped, but uh, more than I expected. So into our backpack now go all of the apiaries that we have. Two tier 3s, two tier 2s, and two tier 1s. Now that's not all we need, every apiary block needs a storage block, and they can have a breeder block, but it's not required, it's optional. The beginning of the end game, oh man. Now I really can't wait to see how powerful these apiaries are. Now we're gonna be using the same blocks that we used over there. I might redecorate some of these apiaries a bit later on because it looks a bit drab at the moment. We're gonna need loads of ethereal glass. Now I like the idea of symmetry and this isn't quite a symmetrical apiary. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the, br the storage block over here. Oh no, <laughs> it had to fall down, didn't it? No worries, I'm going to move that block over to this side so the whole thing is a bit more symmetrical. So an apiary is a large square like this. This is seven blocks long, seven blocks wide, and six blocks tall, with an inside area of five by five by four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'll come back to you guys once these have all been built. But remember, we want four more of these, so let's get to it. Ah, there we go. Right, so you can see the outline now of all of the apiaries that we're going to want to put down. Now, this is actually the perfect number. We must have had like about five bee pods before that were just using normal hives. Now we've got five apiaries and this is going to be an insane powerhouse once it's all down and working. So we'll put down the apiary blocks now. These have to be facing the inside of the apiary. So if you hold shift and right click, it'll put the letterbox on the inside and that's exactly what you want. Oh yeah. So that's two more tier two apiaries. So that's three tier two apiaries in a row. And these last two on the ends are going to be the real powerhouses here, the tier threes. So jetpack enabled, let's complete building these glass cages. 
Now we can do it the slow way by manually placing blocks, or we can look in the computer for a building wand, and that's going to speed things up a lot. So a builder's wand literally looks like this. You can get stone, iron, diamond, or infinity. Although the recipe for the infinity one is, oh wait, a nether star. We can afford that. Amazing. So let's do it. Now I've got the infinity wand. Let me show you how this works. We're just going to hover over the apiary and then we'll get the outline of the block we want to put down. You see here? Yeah. And we right click and boom, it adds another level. All we need to do is this a few more times and perfect. We have another identical apiary. So let's keep doing it. The way this wand works is basically if you've got the blocks in your inventory and you're trying to place something down on a certain type of block, it will copy what you're doing and uh, yeah, let you build an entire layer. Much like a builder's wand from other mods, it's really, really, really useful. Although you do have to be careful though because one misclick and you'll accidentally create like a whole new side of ethereal glass, which is not what you want to do. Alrighty, right, so let's give this bad boy a roof. Looking good. Now, why are we using Ethereal Glass? Well, Ethereal Glass is great because when you hover over it, it says it's not solid to players. That means we can walk through it. However, bees, they cannot fly through it, which is exactly what we want. Now, also, I know what you're thinking. These apiaries look really ugly. They're just big glass cubes, and that's not exactly what this series is about. But don't worry. Once we have the shapes in place, what I'm going to do is come back and do a decorative pass and uh, basically give these apiaries a little bit more decoration. We can replace these glass blocks on the corners with something like wooden logs or stone bricks. And we can give these apiaries peaked roofs as well. And that's going to look amazing, I hope. And there we go, Mischief Manage. We have now five perfectly identical cubes. The only difference is some of these have higher level apiaries and some of them have lower level apiaries. Now, we are going to start with the best apiary there is, the tier 3. You can go to tier 4, but that's a little bit out of our reach. Luckily, with these apiaries up and running, we should get plenty of resources to be able to afford a tier 4 apiary in no time at all. So here is the UI, and you guys are probably thinking, hang on a sec, we saw this video before. The last time you did an apiary, you explained to us how an apiary works and we didn't learn anything. Well, the one thing that's different this time is uh, we're going to work out exactly how many bees we can fit in this bad boy. So I did some asking around, and uh, what people tend to think is that 18 bees is the premium amount of bees. And that is two of each type of bee. So now it's time to crack out our Beepedia and work out the nine most valuable types of bee that we want in our biggest apiary. And there you go. So I've selected some of what I think are the most essential bees for us. Wither bees, diamond bees, redstone bees, netherite, slime, spider, quartz, and then coal. So let's get the blocks we need for flowers for these bees, because they also need flowers as well. Now let's put down these flowery blocks. Let's see. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Netherite, redstone, coal. Okay, and now that's the flowers in position. Let's see about putting these bees in here. Oh wait, we can get nine bees, not eight. Okay, well let's go and grab one more. That's my bad. And I think our next most important bee is probably a gold bee. So we'll get a couple of gold bees. There we go, perfect. And of course, a block of gold. So now we have nine bees in this apiary. Let's see what happens when we unleash them. Oh, there they go. Oh, look at them fly. Amazing. Wait, hold on a sec. What's going on here? Our netherite block just vanished. How, is, how has that happened? Our netherite block turned into one single piece of netherite. That, that's not right. How's that happened? How the actual F did that happen? You know what? I think I know what's happening here. I think the bees are pollinating a flower and then there's a chance that they will turn the netherite brick into another kind of bee. It's like the whole bee mutation pollination thing. So I don't think we can have a wither bee in the same apiary as the nether bees. Okay, so we've got our dream apiary set up. We've got some real impressive bees in here. We've got diamond, coal, redstone, quartz. 
uh, even nether star bees inside here and also slimy bees, just all the bees creating all of the really important resources for us. So let's take a look inside the apiary storage and see how many honeycombs we have in here. Whoa, okay, hold the frickin' phone, Al Capone. Now this is where a tier 3 apiary really shines. Instead of regular honeycombs, these apiaries output honeycomb blocks instead, which is actually huge. It means tier 3 apiaries are massively more important. Oh yeah, that's amazing, look at that. Gold ore, quartz, netherite, all the good stuff. Now the one thing we have to be careful of is how quickly these centrifuges work, because look at this. We're actually getting more spider honeycomb blocks than uh, the centrifuge can process. Oh man, this could be trouble. We could need twice the number of centrifuges. <clears throat> okay, this is all super impressive. Look at this. We've got two full apiaries, tier three, going absolutely nuts. Amazing. Now there's one more thing we need to take care of inside this apiary. We did put ender bees in here and ender bees can potentially be a problem. We need to fix that problem by making a beacon. Basically, just like ender men, ender bees can like teleport around and if they teleport out of the apiary, well, they can't get back in. They're kind of stuck. So we need to make a, a what is it called? A beacon? Yeah, like an ender beacon. There we go. And it's very simple to make, right? I think. Yeah. Here we go, the ender beacon. Boom. We don't have any purple blocks, though. All right, all right. Now, this looks like a giant complex full of purple blocks. Let's smash it down. Lovely stuff. And again, just what we need. That is what I'm talking about. Okay, good stuff. All right, all right, all right. Into the computer with you lads. And uh, let's do it. Let's make the Ender Beacon. The beacons have been lit. Gondor calls for aid and the bees shall answer. It protects bees. So what does the Ender Beacon do? I thought all it did was stop Ender Bees from teleporting around but maybe we should look inside the bee book and see what that says. Ender beacon. Oh, whoa, so there's loads and loads of things here. Effects. The ender beacon can apply certain effects to your bees. Oh my God, while effects are active, they will drain honey from the internal tank. Oh, okay. So you've got to ship honey into the beacon. That shouldn't be a problem. Calming stops them from getting angry. Okay. Water breathing means they can breathe underwater. Wow. Regeneration sounds pretty good, but it is quite honey consuming and fire resistance means they uh, don't get set on fire. Okay, well, I don't think any of these are that important. So we'll put it down here. Whoa, it's bright and it looks pretty cool, but it doesn't have any honey. So let's go and grab some honey from the computer. Okie dokie into the tank goes the oh whoa look at this so it's like an actual beacon up into the sky so this beacon now should mean that our ender bee no longer teleports around so basically one centrifuge can barely keep up if we give it three different types of honeycombs to process so what we're going to do is we're going to have to reconfigure all of our centrifuges here to take three honeycombs at a time so that's three six well, three fives are 15. So we can process 15 different types of honeycombs. So we're gonna have to work out which ones we wanna process before we build some more centrifuge controllers. But this whole thing is actually really crazy. We've got a stupid amount of bees here, way more than we'll ever need. And we've also got the space for three more apiaries, tier two, where we can farm the remainder of our bees. And that is gonna give us so many more options. We can now finally use lumber bees, gravelly bees, And we can also start to think about breeding some of the bees that we need, like, for example, an emerald bee. So let's see what we need to make an emerald bee, because that's something I really want to do. So, a slimy bee. And a gold bee. But why stop there? Let's try and make the breeding upgrade. So there are a number of different upgrade options for your apiaries. For one, you can upgrade the storage, which should give you more space, I imagine. 
inside an apiary. We'll try that because that sounds pretty cool. An iron storage. There we go. Got the upgrade stuff. Amazing. There's also a breeder upgrade which adds additional breeders to the apiary breeders. Well, that's kind of interesting, but I don't think we'll need it. And there's also a breed time upgrade, which reduces the maximum amount of time it takes to breed. And that's going to be really important. 300 ticks is roughly about 15 seconds. All right, all right. So we've got our two prime apiaries on the end. Let's go to the tier two one and put in the bees that we want. Now we're also going to need, uh, oh yeah, we're also going to need the flowers that these bees need to breed properly. So we'll put a, wait, whoa, is that see-through? Oh no, it's just reflective. So we'll put a gold block in the corner and a slimy block in the other corner. Nothing like a block of Minecraft slime. And into the corner with you, my friend. Now we put the bees into the actual apiary. Oh, we've also got to configure it first. Here we go. So the gold, wait, hang on a sec. No, you don't put it in here, do you? You put it in this block here, and I don't even think you need the flower. You just put the slimy bee, the pearls, the gold bee, the gold blocks, and this should happen naturally in the background. Oh no, we need uh, a bee jar as well. But also, the breed time upgrade. Boom. Now actually, there's four slots here, so can we make four of these? If we can, that would be insane. So let's see what it does. Oh my god, yeah, that stacks. So that's a grand total of 15, 30. That shaves a whole minute off the entire breeding process. That's really cool. Oh yeah, look at this, pure speed. However, what it doesn't do is increase our chances. However, I do feel very, very, very lucky. I feel like we're going to get an emerald. Oh man, so unlucky. Now, I'm fairly sure... Wait, hang on a sec. Let's check these other blocks because it... Oh my god, whoa! Oh my god, hold the phone, Al Capone. Stop breeding right now. I had no idea, but it puts the finished bees inside the bee storage. So we've just got two emerald bees. No way. So I wonder what happens if we try and put the bee in manually. Let's try that. There we go. And another one. Wait, that's a slimy bee. What are we doing? There we go. And the emerald bee. And the emerald bee has flown into the, uh, the apiary. Okay, so it does work. Even if you can't import the bee automatically using the UI, you can just right click and toss the bee in there and it will still work. Well, okay, now we need to configure the centrifuges for the emerald bee honeycombs. Oh my god, oh, so look at this. You can't actually centrifuge Kobe beef honeycomb blocks. Aha, uh -huh. so we've, it's been just gumming up our entire system. Now that makes so much more sense. And there we go, our first emerald honeycomb, and fingers crossed, we're gonna get some sweet, sweet emeralds. Okay, so fast forward and we decorated our apiaries just a little bit. As you can see here, because the apiary doesn't have to be made out of glass, what I've done is I've contoured the edges with some oak logs. I've added some clay shingles that we've used over at the colony, over here on the apiaries, and we've got this rough, loose outline of what our apiaries are going to look like. And basically, I did it for these two to start with because they're the only ones with bees in at the moment. And we'll repeat this pattern and this style on the existing apiaries, and the whole thing is going to look pretty freaking amazing. And here's what the apiaries look like under the glow of the full moon with those lanterns lighting it up. So thank you for watching. This episode, we covered basically the finer points of apiaries and laid the groundwork for our final bee setup. We shouldn't, in theory, need any more than these five apiary spots, especially considering that you can actually fit two apiaries, like you see here, inside the same block. You just need one extra apiary and one extra storage. So thank you for watching. A huge thank you to all the people that comment, subscribe, hit like, and an even bigger thank you to everybody that's become a channel member. Thank you very, very much. Until next time, though, take care.